The magical world of compositing will allow you to do anything you can think of, and we're going to show you how to do it. I love compositing. It is the perfect playground for your mind. Literally anything you can think of, you can turn into a reality. By compositing different images together, you can see those amazing ideas in your head come to life. Compositing is also a wonderful tool for those of you guys who are on a budget. Instead of like bringing everyone onto location and having this like logistical nightmare, you can photograph someone in a studio or in your basement or in your living room on a background and then put them into a different screen. I'm composited onto a different screen right now. This is a simple form of compositing. The original, there's a green screen right behind me. See, we'll show you. This is a type of compositing. You can make anything you want real. So it's a wonderful way to save money and make your visions come true. Compositing is so powerful and it's cost effective and it's why it's becoming the standard for like the commercial world, the advertising world and the conceptual world. Being able to bring all these things together is a huge, huge benefit. And learning how to composite means that you're gonna become a bigger player in these fields. So as you rise up and you wanna enter into these more complicated fields, the ability to composite is going to put you at the top of the list of competitors. So here at Flurn, we decided to create the ultimate tutorial. Everything you guys need to know about creating these composites. Like everything from building the background to photographing people in the subject, combining them all together and making an amazing out of this world image. And this is what we're going over today. So to pull this off, we needed some crazy concept. And I'm a huge Star Wars dork. I absolutely love it. And the idea of like being able to create something that might exist in the Star Wars world uh, was just totally cool to me. And the first time I saw Star Wars, I was in love with Tatooine, you know, where Luke grows up. There's like multiple planets in the background. You've got sand people and all these like really just amazing ideas in there. And this was like the perfect chance for us to create a world like that. So. Building the concept, we kind of started out with some of these ideas that we pulled from Star Wars and from other various places, you know, from our own childhood and memories. And then we wanted to build this world, so we had to kind of like break apart each one of the different parts to bring it back together so it made sense as a whole. So the first thing we did was started assembling the backdrop. We got different photos and all kinds of crazy elements and started pulling them together and figuring out what does this world look like? Because what it looked like is gonna dictate what the people who live in this world and the structures and the buildings that they live in. So after we have the world kind of built up, then we can start building up their structures to like basically reflect what's going on in their environment. We wanted to create like this, you know, very hot during the day, cold at night environment. It's a totally desolate place where people are having to hunt for their food. There's sandstorms and a hot sun beating down on you. So we created things like characters who were covered completely in rags. Like this is, you know, just available cloth that they could find. Some to cover their face from the sand and the, you know, the sun that's hitting their face. So they're kind of like these dark characters. They're out there on the hunt and they ride these like really amazing pack animals. And just building this whole world around it and kind of fitting all the different pieces of wardrobe and styling together for this was so much fun and such a big part of the photo shoot that uh, we couldn't have done it without having like those, all the ideas and the concept phase to begin with. When attempting to accomplish a composite of this scale, you wanna make sure you do everything right. We show you guys exactly what you need to do in this tutorial. So we started off with creating our background and the reason we did that is so we could know exactly what we were dealing with when it comes to lighting, when it comes to color, and when it comes to wardrobe. So when we photographed our subject, we were matching just one part of our subject to the, our entire background, to this landscape. So that's why creating your backdrops for compositing is so important. Do those first every single time 
and then photograph your subject in the studio and it's gonna make it so much easier to put them right into your backdrop, make everything seamless. The background for this image is so complex. It's actually created from 18 different images. In the tutorial, we show you how to do everything step by step from start all the way to finish. It's so cool. We warp and transform and colorize and change and contrast and basically pull these elements that have nothing to do with each other all together to create this perfect world. Such a cool part of learning how to create a background in Photoshop. Another really fun thing we got to do was actually build our subject's wardrobe. And this is just, these things can be done relatively inexpensively. It just kind of depends on where your imagination takes you. But it might be cool to like have this as a base and then we use a lot of this to like, you know, wrap it around and stuff like that to like, and totally wrap it around and then make a hood. So you want a bunch of these? Yeah, let's try it first without the, we'll try it without the lights first. Yeah, so a bunch of these strips, and then I kind of want to like distress them a bit. So um, maybe we'll just use that bag of dirt for that. Well, for this, what we did is we just went to a local fabric store and we bought some burlap, just a really cheap fabric. We took it back here in the studio and we kind of ran it through like mud and sand and dirty water, stuff like this, and just kind of like really mess it up. And from there we cut sheets into it and just started wrapping our subject with it. And we did this during the photo shoot. We used a mask to cover his face and we also got a couple like really cool uh, props from a prop store like an ammo belt and like a nice bag, things like that. And uh, once we actually created the wardrobe, then it's time to like uh, see if we can modify it a little bit, make it look like it's a little bit worn, like it's a part of this world. We even went as far in depth as to light part of it on fire to kind of like give it that uh, extra little look. I'm not sure if it makes a difference in the final image, but it was a lot of fun to light someone's head on fire in the studio. <laughs> The key to lighting a composite like this is making sure you can light your subject in a way that actually reflects what's going on in the backdrop. The backdrop is already created. We built it in Photoshop. The light on that is not gonna change. So what we wanna do is figure out in the studio how we can match that. And there's a lot of things to keep in mind here. Things like the atmosphere. Is it a very clear area? Is there some haze going on in the air? Where is the sun in this image? Is it kind of like a setting sun behind it? What's the atmosphere like? Is it just a very cool place? Is it a very warm place? Are there hard shadows? Are there soft shadows? Is there, are there cloud cover? All these things come into play. So when we're actually placing our lights in the studio, we know what we're gonna be doing and how to actually like mimic the light from the atmosphere to get it to look like it was right on our subjects. Because we're working with an image where the suns are setting and it's a general like warm glow going on, it's very low contrast image, we knew we needed to set up something similar in the studio. So we've got large light sources just shooting into the walls and the ceilings where you're using a lot of CTO gels to kind of like warm up that color a little bit. So we get a big broad light, something that just completely envelops our subject. And then we're pumping in lights from areas like above our subject to imitate like the dome of light, basically like the setting sun in the sky 
kind of like draw that light in and create a little bit of shadow where our subjects look like you can't necessarily see their face. So all this light, it's really big and broad and we're warming it up. So when it comes time to composite our subjects in, in the image in Photoshop, it's not a ton of work because they're, they're lit already to the background. So when you're planning on doing a composite like this, there are a couple other elements you want to keep in mind. Uh, first, if you know you're going to be cutting your subject out of the background, get a relatively simple backdrop. We're using seamless paper. You can get it on Amazon or your local photography store. It's like 50 bucks. You basically roll it out and you're photographing someone on just a plain gray seamless backdrop. And this makes it really easy to cut the person out in Photoshop because you can use things like the magic wand tool, save yourself a ton of time so you don't have to get in and get every little detail with things like the pen tool. So get a super simple backdrop. The other thing to think about is Try to have your subject actually stand on a surface that's relatively similar to what you want them to be on in the final image. For this, we actually brought sand in and we had our subject stand, stand on like a little mound of sand. What that did is it made it a lot easier. So instead of having to cut it out and make it look like they were standing in the actual environment in Photoshop, they were standing in a pile of sand. So we were able to include the actual stand the sand from the photo shoot in the final image so seamlessly you couldn't even tell that that's the sand that wasn't in the original image, it was the sand from the actual photo shoot here in the studio. The next thing you want to do is make sure you're working with your subject in a way that they're actually going to fit into the background image. Now we're shooting at a similar focal length. This is like, it's a wide shot, but it's relatively, some of the subjects are going to be farther away. So we didn't want to use a wide angle lens when we're photographing subjects that are supposed to be far away from the camera. So we're still working with a relatively normal focal length here, even though the subject is far away. What we also wanted to do is before we started photographing our subject, place some like mock figures or just some like test people in the scene so we could figure out where exactly we wanted our subjects to be in the final. And that opened up a huge possibility because we could say like, okay, we want a person off in the distance here, like pointing off to the city, or we want this person like right up close to the camera, like this is our hero subject. Or maybe this person's like over there in the sand doing something else. So we knew a couple different places we wanted to put our subject and that allowed us to kind of get our brains thinking of like, what would they be doing in this place? What's going on here and things like that which helped us then work with our subject here in the studio so we could kind of like direct them, like, you know, throw your hands up in the air and yell or like, you know, look off into the distance or get on your knees and raise your little staff and do all these like really cool things that just kind of came about from having the background already and then knowing where we would actually put those subjects into the image in the final. So having, having that interaction between, you know, the, a person in the studio that is not at all in the background but making them look like they're in the background, it can only be done through compositing and having the background already created before you start your image. So that's another a huge tip there. Create that background first, imagine where you want the people to be, and then go about creating those people and putting them in the places. So from this amazing photo shoot, we've created a pro tutorial, which teaches you everything you need to know from start all the way to finish. It's over three and a half hours in Photoshop alone. This is taking every single image, all 18 plus images, from start, like where they have nothing to do with each other and building this, building the background, creating all of our different images. We're creating custom brushes. We're using amazing special effects, actions that make compositing really, really easy. And we're bringing in our subjects. We create everything you guys need to know and pack it all into one tutorial. To find out more information and to pick up your pro tutorial, just follow the link on the screen. Thanks so much guys and we'll learn you later.